Hey guys, and happy birthday to Sonic. Now I'm going to play the game that everybody says is the greatest Sonic game ever, and I would hugely disagree. But it's been requested like nuts, so I figured today's the perfect day to do it. Um, I guess I'll end up getting to explaining... Let me get rid of a saved game. I have a lot of random games in here. Uh, sure, this one. So yeah, Sonic's birthday, 18 now. Damn, he's old. And, uh, yeah. Everyone says Sonic CD is the, is the best platform out of the classic... Uh, oh, wow. Out of the classic four, I guess. Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles, and this. I would say it's the least. I would. It's my least favorite out of them all, actually. Um, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. Plenty of people I talk to think the same thing. The time travel mechanic is kind of cool, but the stupid cutscene is really sl slows down the gameplay. And, um, the level design is pretty much atrocious. I mean, it's playable, and I'm, I'm not going to try getting the, uh, all the time stones, even though this game has the best special stages out of all of them. But, oh my god. But the level design is really bad. Random enemies out of nowhere. Like, it, it's probably not going to happen now, but there will be times later on where enemies will come out of nowhere, basically making me lose all the rings I get, and... This game has the 50 rings to get um, time stone thingy to go to the special stage. But I did see something down here. Now the only you never want to go to the future. The future is pointless. You got to come to the past. And where the hell is it? I don't know. There's some sort of weird like hologram generator thingy. Is that it? No. Nah. There's a weird like holo hologram generator thing that's only in the past and you need to destroy that. There's like two of them. And if you do that in both acts, you fight the boss in a good future. You always fight the the zone, the act boss, and the zone boss in a future. Just depending on what you did, gets you either bad or good future. And then I got 50 rings, got to the end, we're going to the special stage. Now these special stages are freaking awesome. You're in this weird 3D thing, and basically just running around, he's moving by himself. But I'm controlling left and right, obviously. And he's basically going to jump and destroy all of these uh, UFOs. And this is by far the best uh, special stage out of them all. Bet oh man, better than uh, so Sonic Blue Spheres. Better than all of them. And they actually do get pretty tricky. Uh, basically, you see, you have a time limit, and it goes down pretty fast. If you're walking on water, I, I don't know. I don't know about grass, but I know if you're walking on water, the time goes down a lot faster. And if it goes to zero, you're screwed. When there's ever like 20 or 30 seconds left, I think 20. There's a blue UFO, like a really light blue UFO that goes in the middle of the stage. You hit that, you get more time. So you can technically do it forever, but it's like Tetris. You can play that forever, but soon enough it just becomes too hectic that you'll lose your place. And uh, that is the best part about the game. A lot of people, a lot of people also go crazy about the music, and this is... I really don't care. Both, mu both sound... Oh god, that falls down. Both soundtracks have their good and bad points. As far as Palm Tree Panic goes... It doesn't make sense why this song didn't appear in Brawl at all, but um, I, I prefer the American version over the Japanese version. The Japanese version is way too peppy for me. This version is perfect. I actually really like the song. It's one of the only good songs in the sound in the American soundtrack. The Japanese soundtrack isn't as special as everyone says. Um, and then there's one more thing I want to complain about, and then I'm basically going to compl- Whoa, I almost landed right on top of an enemy. That would have been horrible. Oh. I'm going to basically be complaining about every single boss when I get to them, because every single boss is bad. And it's not like Shadow, where the boss is so bad it's funny. The bosses are bad here where they didn't even try. Damn it! Okay. Okay, the last thing I want to complain about, before I just randomly do the bosses... Oh, i got to find a good placement. Oh, God, I don't want to go to the future. No future for me. Yeah, there's no point in not going to get my 50 rings. Okay, what I want to complain about is the spin dashing, which I'll just show in the next zone. Spin dashing is one of the dumbest things I've seen in this game. It's not classic spin dashing where you hold down and tap the A button, you let go of A, and you go. Here it's like you hold down, and then you have to hold A, wait for the sound clip to stop, and then you let go. It's a horrible spin, like... It's really, really stupid, and I don't see the point of it. There's also the super peel out, which is, um... holding up. And that's really stupid, because it gives you about the same speed as the spin dash, and it leaves you vulnerable. One of the best things about the spin dash is that if you're low on speed, you just do that, and you can go, 
and you don't have to worry about enemies killing you because you can ro you can roll right through them. Okay, now they're gonna leave an, in an invincibility on this level for this boss. The boss is pathetic anyway. You don't even need to do anything. Stand on the left of the screen, wait for him to walk backwards. He'll leave himself wide open. Hit him. Hit one bumper. Hit the other bumper. Hit Eggman. You're done. And we beat the first zone. This game actually goes pretty fast. It's probably actually the shortest out of all of them. Because I try to speed through it like, I'm, I, like I do with the other ones. It's kind of hard to with all the random enemies going to kill me. And now we're going to see the staple that was created in the series right here. Amy. Looks a lot, li a lot different than she does now, right? Still stalking Sonic as always. And here's Metal Sonic. I believe Metal Sonic was the better edition of the two, because Metal Sonic is freaking awesome and he needs to be brought back. He needs more representation than Amy does at this point. Um, making the final boss the next Sonic game, I don't care. But yeah, Amy's in this game, and now basically your goal is to save Amy. And not, I mean, this game would actually benefit a lot from like mid, mid zone cutscenes. Oh my god, these guys. Those guys will always hit you out of nowhere unless you memorize every single path, every, every single one they're at. This game would actually really benefit from mid-zone cutscenes to explain, I don't know, something about Metal Sonic. I'm pretty sure this, I know the Sega CD was able to do cutscenes. Oh my god. I actually should have put the open, are you serious? I should have put the opening cutscene in, but uh, I guess forgot to. But yeah, the, the, I know the Sega CD could do cutscenes, they should have had at least one cutscene somewhere. I'm not going to the future, future sucks. That's not cool, that was my fault. And I gotta say though, even though I don't like this game so much, I still love it. If that makes any sense, it's like you know when you have something that you have that you have to love, even though you don't like it. It's like forced upon you, like family members you don't like, but you're forced to love them. <clears throat> Basically, I grew up with this game. I grew up with this Sonic game more than the others. Uh, I had all the Sonic games on Genesis. I didn't have Sonic and Knuckles, but I had Sonic and Three. I wasn't even aware of Sonic and Knuckles' existence actually. Um, but I had this on my PC, and I played this a hell of a lot. Don't even know why, but it's one of those things where when you're a kid, you play anything and don't care if it's good or bad. And, uh, that probably would be the case at this age, but with all the fanboyism and the way gaming is turned about this, at this day and age, that can't happen again. Gaming is not the same as it used to be, so it is nice to come back and play all these old classic games to relive what it was like when gaming actually meant something and it wasn't always about a war. Because a fanboy war is one of the dumbest things that happened to gaming ever. The first time I heard about a fanboy I was still in shock, like I'm serious, this is what gaming has turned out to be. And also it's funny about all the people who bitch about Sonic games. Sonic has taken a turn. Some say it's for the worst, some say it's for the best. I say it doesn't matter, it's a different Sonic. Play the game and shut the F up. If you're gonna just buy a Sonic game to bitch about it... <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone knows about the Sonic cycle as far as everything is concerned. I'm in the Sonic cycle of how any other cycle works. I see the game trailer, I get excited for it, I look at... I watch screenshots and trailers um, in the months before and prior to its release. Then when the game comes out, I buy it. Simple enough, then I play it, I love it to death, and, you know, I go on from there. How the Sonic fanboys work is a lot different, and it's pretty much unanimous. Uh, there's actually a picture on it, so if you want to go look up Sonic Cycle, that's fine, because it probably has in better words, because I'm trying to remember what it said. It was, trailer comes out that looks really awesome, and everyone is pumped. New information is revealed, some sort of second character is revealed, and people are still pumped for it. People for excited for variety and whatnot, the trailers are still getting them pumped. And they set their expectations way too high. Then the game comes out, the game doesn't meet their expectations, and they bitch and moan until the next Sonic game gets shown off, and then they repeat the cycle. Um, I never set my, expe my expectations too high. Like, as far as Black Knight was concerned, I was excited for that because I, I like Secret Rings, so of course I'm going to be excited for that, but as far as everyone else was concerned, they said, they, oh my god, it looks really good. And then when the game said, it looked really good, what happened? Uh, it's also funny that you see people be like, the sword controls are really responsive. And then you see other people, the sword controls were not responsive at all. 
Whatever, I'm talking about Sonic CD. For some reason, this is unanimously known as the best Sonic game ever. When the level design is just not that good. I mean, I mean, it didn't have that many bad enemy encounters at this point, but 